Hello, my name is Jim Sadler. I'm a superintendent of the Floriculture Building. And today, uh, the different superintendents of the, uh, of, the, of the Western Montana Fair are going to show folks how to enter and what is special about their, their various departments. Uh, if you, uh, if you uh, have interest in craft work, floral designs, or whatever, it is our um, hope that we'll be able to answer those questions for you. Hello. Hello. Who's the superintendent here or in charge? I am. And your name is? Alex. Alex. Well, Alex, tell us about your building here. What, uh, what do you have? Uh, so I'm in charge of the fine arts department. And what fine arts is about is a whole bunch of fun. Um, we have Legos. We got connects. Uh, we got unique creative pieces over here that she's working on. Uh, basically, if it's anything the fine art style, then we're, we're here to have you enter it and, and definitely show it off and enjoy it. Are paintings part of yours? Absolutely. Uh, paintings are acrylic paintings, oil color paintings, pencils, pens, black and white, uh, um, anything basically related to the fine arts. And, and when is your entry dates? Our entry dates are, I want to say the final deadline is Wednesday the 7th, I want to say. Let me double check real quick. Yep, Thursday and Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. is when you can enter. Okay. And if you have any questions or concerns... Of you know, what month? Wednesday and Friday? Of August. August. Of August. Yep. Okay, so that's fairly close to the fair. Yep, right before. Basically, uh, the week before the fair, that Thursday and Friday... Okay. Uh, ...bring down your entries and, uh, or over to the commercial building. And right. then we'll put them up, and then they'll be displayed all the way through the fair. Do you need hangers or anything to put, hang your paintings? So for the paintings, we do. We're asking that they have it, either a wire frame or a uh, like a yarn frame with tape on it, as long as it, it won't fall off, basically. Right. And then anything else um, that stand alone, we have a cabinet that they can be put into. Okay, so... I remember uh, doing Legos uh, when I was a little kid, and they're kind of, um, they could be kind of bulky, and, and if people touch them, they kind of fall apart. Uh, and so, so how do you protect from that from happening? So for our Legos, we do have some that are on the displays themselves that some people can touch. The majority of them go in a glass case or several glass cases, and they're just for to be able to see. And you have good security for all that. So that Absolutely because when you get up 10 year olds, they like to uh, look at things and, and oh, yeah, forget they, where they belong. They definitely do. No, we, we uh, last year we had three or four people watching the cases at all time to make sure the little ones didn't uh, become too adventurous with them. Okay, that's good. Do you have anything else you want to add? Uh, the more Legos, the better. The more entries, the better. Adults, kids, teenagers, especially teenagers. I know they don't you know, play with them as much anymore, but we are definitely looking to try and increase the amount that we have this year. So okay. anyone that's interested, young or old, please come down. We're, we're more than happy to... to tell me what this uh, lady is doing. Uh, so this is the duct tape. Duct tape. Oh, that's a, that's that new craft that everybody's yeah, that, doing. Yeah, it's the big thing. Um, yeah, now there's even contests and prize money for college that uh, they're doing for prom dresses and tuxedos. Right. So this is a much smaller scale, obviously. But. Right. Um, I think I was given an, a billfold, and I would couldn't believe that it was made out of duct tape. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually. What yours what is? I've been using for. So. Uh, what do you have, categories that you enter? Uh, or you just show up with your project? Or? Um, yeah, a lot of us would, would go under the unique category um, okay. on there. But yeah, anything from, I mean, you know, you've got kind of portraits, you've got your three dimensionals. And this is all cut out? Is that what yep, it is? Yeah, that's all cut out. Well, so we yeah, don't. It's all duct tape. That's very interesting. And this is like a little purse? Correct, yep. And it's duct tape in and out? Yep, duct tape inside and out. And what's this, a hat? Yeah, that is a hat. I made that a couple years ago for breast cancer awareness, so. Oh. Well, that's clever. But, so just, yeah. And, and where do you get this duct tape? Um, 
all over Murdoch's, Walmart, um, Joann's, oh, pretty much all the craft stores. Yeah, all the all craft have. stores, period. Um, and yeah, and there a lot of them getting more into more of the designed, specialized okay, the colored stuff. Paint, yeah. Okay. Well, I thank you. Thank you. Thank and you. your entry time is the same as. Uh, yeah. Correct. Yes. Yep. Everything's the same. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Thanks. So, who's in charge of this department? I am. And your name is? My name is Ron Rogers. Ron Rogers? Yeah. Well, tell us about what, uh, your demolition derby, car yeah, wars. Uh, we have a demolition derby every year, uh, okay. the last day of the fair. And it's uh, 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 basically, uh, we try to bring in cars from all over. So uh, people from Montana, Idaho, Washington, or wherever yeah, exactly. can all exactly. enter. Is there a circuit that people travel through? There the, is. There's the, a circuit uh, that a lot of uh, the drivers that go down to San or Utah, uh, you uh, all over. Uh, and you coordinate your time. Uh, uh, your time is because there are usually some place a couple yeah, days we, before. We do the. We try to do the derbies on. Uh, different dates for even fairs in, uh, in Montana. Right. And, and uh, tell us about the cars. The what, cars? What's special about them? Well, the cars have to be built. Uh, our cars are pretty much built on a stock car format. Uh, they have a roll cage for protection. Uh, they, uh, the fuel tank has to be in a certain spot. Uh, the batteries have to be in a certain spot up in front. And, and it's all for protection. It's all about safety. For, and this is, that's the rules. Okay, it says payouts. First place is $4,000? Yes, yes. Wow. This year is... And 2000 for a second and 1000 for a third? Yes. And we're also paying out a lot of, like, a lot of little uh, uh, bonuses. Uh, we're going to kind of have fun with it this year. First hire. Yeah, it comes off a car. Come oh, I see. Uh, we're going to pay out fifty dollars. Uh, okay. Things like that, a lot of little surprises like that. Uh, do you get many locals uh, who who come in and? We do. Uh, we do. Uh, we're hoping to get uh, a lot more of the local. We're trying to to get the younger uh, drivers back in. Okay. Uh, the cars have got so competitive that it's it, it's uh, monetarily it's hard for the younger ones to build a car. So oh. we're going to try to go backwards a little bit. And because of the safety features that. Exactly. Uh, because there's certain requirements they have to have, correct? Exactly. Right. And, and if we if we lower the 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 sta or the competition a little bit, the, the cars can come down too, and oh, it's see. more affordable for for younger uh, drivers, everybody to uh, to join. And about how much time does a does a does the event take? Is it a couple hours? We spend an evening. Uh, about three three and a half hours. I see. So, uh, yeah. And this is something you can bring your family to? Yes, yeah, it's completely family oriented. Uh, there is uh, there's a section in the uh, bleachers that is only for families. Okay. And here's your entry, Demolition Day um, driver entry form. Yes. And when do they have to have this in by? Uh, they have to have it in by uh, uh, July 16th. July 16th. Yes. Well, let's encourage everybody to uh, do an entry and uh, and show up for your demolition derby. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We're in the poultry barn here. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, this is the poultry department. Who's who's in charge here? She is. That would be me. I'll talk and you can film him. Okay. <laughs> and what's your name? My name is Kristen Wisenam and I am one of the poultry superintendents. The other poultry superintendent is Laura Denido and she's not here because she's coming home from California today. Oh. So we're it. I mean you allowed her out of state? <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty much. Uh, well tell us about your department. Um, what I wanted to present here today for folks was an idea of how to take care of your chickens to get them ready for the fair. Um, so we're going to give a chicken a bath, which we can do whenever we 
me want to go outside. Uh, and then I wanted to talk about uh, poultry nutrition and then a little bit about external parasites on poultry, which isn't a lot of fun, but they all get them. Um, and so I brought some stuff uh, that you either treat the birds directly with or that you put in their dust bath so that they can treat themselves. Um, because regardless of how hard you try, you will always wind up with some chickens with bugs on them. And it's not something to worry about, but it's just something that you have to manage in your flock. Um, and uh, that was pretty much it. Well, I know there's lots of um, backyard flocks in Missoula now. Mm -hmm. It's become quite a, um, a local hobby. Oh, it has, and I'm really, I'm really happy about that. Um, I think it's a, it's a great thing for people to do. There's nothing better than fresh eggs. Oh, that's true. Yep. And um, about how many uh, chickens do you have uh, uh, on average year, would you oh, say? Do you fill year, your barn? Um, we do. Um, I pasture my poultry, uh, so they've got about an acre to run around in and eat bugs and stuff. They also get regular chicken food. Um, I have 25 uh, laying birds right now, and then I have 15, 16, 17, 18 um, speckled Sussex, which are what they call a dual purpose breed. They're good for laying eggs and for meat that are, uh, are growing up right now, and I'm going to replace, they're gonna become my flock. Okay. So eventually. that I can, yeah. So that I can just have one type of bird, and I can keep everyone together. Okay. So you, so they don't mix. Yes. And uh, tell me about uh, the building where where you uh, where where they're displayed at here oh, at the okay. fair. Um, we're going to be. We'll be in the llama barn, um, which we share with uh, the goats and the rabbits. Um, because of avian influenza, the state. Uh, veterinarian has requested that we not have any waterfowl at the fair this year. No because ducks. No ducks, no geese. Everything else is okay. And the reason for that is um, if your chickens or your turkeys get avian influenza, they will be very, very sick before you ever get them to the fair. So you will know you have a very sick animal and you won't bring it. Uh, the, the waterfowl, on the other hand, um, can carry the disease for several days before they start showing symptoms so it's it's possible that we could bring we'd have waterfowl at the fair that were contagious and so we're just trying not to do that in this particular area geographic area we don't see avian influenza as any kind of real risk because we're between flyways um, so we don't get a lot of wild waterfowl coming through who are the primary, the carriers of, of the disease. Um, but it's, it's just erring on the side of caution okay. for this year. Hopefully next year everything will be back to normal. Okay. Well, tell us about uh, this nutritional stuff. Okay. Um, generally, you'll feed your... You'll feed your birds three kinds of <laughs> uh, three kinds of stuff. Um, you've got your your uh, uh, your your main feed, which you'll get is in a pelleted or a crumble form. That's a mix um, from the feed store. Uh, there's something called uh, 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 scratch grains, which is a mix of barley, oats, and corn usually, and that's like a treat for the chickens because it's very high in fat but very low in protein. Um, and then there are supplements that we give them. We give them oyster shell, particularly if they're laying, because they use uh, a lot, a lot of calcium. What, what, what if uh, can you buy just one of those layer uh, mixes mm -hmm. that has supposedly a I've noticed that some of the mixes say they have a complete balance mm -hmm. in them. Uh, th Those they're are okay. Good. Those are really good. Um, if you raise larger breeds of fowl, um, we generally recommend that you go with the highest protein feed you can find. Um, if you're raising show birds, um, it would usually be what they call a game bird mix, which has okay. a 20% okay. protein. Your average layer mix will be from 16 to 18% protein. And the, and the good food shows up how on the bird? 
Um, it shows up in their, their overall condition. You will see it in their feathers. Um, and if you pick it up, handling your birds, uh, watching and handling your birds is the best way to determine if your birds are getting everything that they need. Um, if you pick up your birds, they should feel filled out. They should feel heavy compared to what they look like they should weigh. Um, and their feathers should be nice and glossy. Um, they should be, their, their color should be good. Their, their wattles and their comb should be bright, um, bright red. Their eyes should be bright. Um, what, do you have a category for, uh, for not a perfect chicken? Well, we do. Well, because not everybody can raise that perfect chicken. Oh, no. No. What we're looking for at the fair is healthy chickens, chickens that have been well cared for. Um, we, we, even in a flock, there are chickens who are like the Zsa, Zsa Gabors of the right. chicken world, and the roosters just are really mean to them, and they lose all the feathers on their back. And while there's still a healthy chicken, that's not something that we want to see at the fair because the people who don't have chickens don't understand that this is normal. <laughs> And they think there's something wrong and the chicken is sick. Right. And we just, we don't, we, we're, what we're trying to do is, is, is I don't want to say sell, but, but Educate. we want everyone, yes, we want everyone to love the chickens. Um, and, and so we want to, to show people the best chickens we can find. Okay. So how, how are we going to do this, wash the chicken for the fair bit? We are going to go out here. We have three buckets of water, and I'll bring some soap and a chicken and a towel, and we'll okay. wash a chicken. Can we cut it here and go out and wash a chicken? Okay. okay. Oh, you got a little um, golden, what is it, a Seabright? These are ceramas. Ceramas. Mm -hmm. I had sea brights. Oh, I, we had sea brights too, but they're so flighty. Our one of our roosters, he flew up and hit his head on the. Oh yeah. Roof and kill, so what's killed the procedure here? Yeah, ours didn't um, didn't last. Is we're gonna have we have one, more, one we have one bucket that has soap in it, one bucket that has a little less soap in it, and then one bucket that has no soap. And we're going to so soap the chicken twice, and then rinse it off, and then we're going to roll her up in a towel, and she's gonna dry off. All right, so. Dip your chicken. You know, yeah. Put the soap in the water first. Okay, we'll do it your way. Okay. Is that cold water or warm water? Or? It's cold. Yeah, it'll be fine. And why do you wash a chicken? To make them look nice. And okay, it kind of takes off all of the... It, take, it, it takes off all of the dirt. Um, it also takes off all of the oils. So you want to do this one week to ten days before you're going to show them so that they have a chance to get the oils back. And the other thing is, once you've washed them, don't put them back in with the flock. This okay. is where you want to separate them so they stay neat and clean till after the party, so to speak. Okay. You clean them up for the prom, huh? Yep. Now that's the second dip. So what you're doing is removing um, the soap. Yep. The soap. Yep. This is a very tame little chicken. They actually really like being washed. The first time we did it, I was like, oh, this is going to be a rodeo. And they were just great. We usually do, the little guys, we just do in the kitchen sink. Oh, I see. Um, it's, it's a lot. It's convenient. And since they don't have a fit. Um, Once they figure out what's going on, I yeah. suppose. Does this chicken have a name? Um, mm, this is Henny, isn't it? Henny Penny? I think so. I'm not sure. Well, everybody likes to name their chickens. Mm -hmm. I have seven black chickens, and I have no clue which one is which. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now for the rolling. Here, let's do it out here. So what are you doing now? And now we roll her up so she can dry, so we can dry her out.
Oh, she's really nervous. They, they all vibrate. <laughs> Even when they're asleep, they vibrate. And the thing about chickens is when you turn the lights out, they, it's like you anesthetize them. So if you put them in, if you've got them in the dark in a towel like this, even a big chicken, it won't move until you take it out. So well, we have now washed a chicken. Well, I thank you. Mm -hmm. And if the weather were bad, um, Wesley would probably blow dry it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. And what kind of soap did you use? Oh, this is actually a dog soap called Tropic Clean. Um, is it for animals? Just it's general? for animals, yeah. It's an oatmeal soap. Okay. Um, okay. You can also use Dove. Okay, real, real uh -huh. mild soaps. Yeah, Dove works really well. It's what they use on all of those poor critters that have come out of the ocean, yeah. The oil on them. Okay. So. Okay, well, thank you. You bet. Jim, I don't think you asked about the deadline. Oh, yes. Well, when, do, when do you enter the... Um, uh, when's the entries uh, times? I'm going to have to check because I can't remember. <laughs> Is it a week before the fair? Or? Um, no, for the birds it's different. Uh, it's earlier. I think it's like July 12 or something. We'll go look. I should know these things, but I don't. Friday, July 10th is all open class livestock. Entries are due. Okay, July 10th. Yes. So you have several weeks. And what, what do you do? Uh, you just basically go online? You go online. Um, I haven't tried the full online site yet. Um, there is also a way to enter Okay, just copy. The, the traditional way? Yes, yes. And just remember that there are two sizes of chicken. There are standard chickens, which are big chickens. Right. And there are bantam chickens, which are little chickens. But, which we just watched. Sure, yeah. Yes. If you're not sure if your bird is a bantam or a standard, Enter it as a standard because it's easier to put a little bird in a big cage than a big bird in a little cage. <laughs> okay. And what, what if you have five chickens you're going to enter and only three of them really look good? Can oh. you, you enter the five and then only bring the three? You can do that, um, but you pay for five. Okay. So there's that. Uh, there's also, you can enter eggs. You can enter a lane, uh, a lane hen with a half a dozen eggs. And um, not a lot of people do it, so if, if you have a really good laying hen who lays beautiful eggs, um, you can make, what was it? I think it's $25. Okay. And what does it cost to enter then? I don't know that either. I'm so unprepared. Well, it's in the book, is it not? It's in the book. Okay. Well, I want to thank you, and Sorry. and you gave us a lot of good information. And yes. July 10th is the entry date. July 10th is the entry date, and I'm okay. sorry. I'm... Okay. Thank I you. I know all the four each stuff. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks. We're coming over here to the rabbit barn. And uh, who, who's in charge of this part? Um, Carla and I, and I'm Wendy. Wendy and um, Carla? We are the superintendents for the Rabbit Barn for both Open Class and 4-H. Okay. And um, both of us have been in the Dual County doing rabbits for about 10, 11 years. Yeah, I think Avery and I have been doing it for about nine years. Yeah. Okay, and, well. Um, there are 49 different rabbits. Uh, I mean, um, Varieties or breeds. breeds? Yes, and varieties would be the colors, and I couldn't even guess how many varieties there are okay. in the colors, but there's 49 different breeds, and breeds. within each breed there's multiple colors. And you bring in a judge for them? We do bring in a judge. Our judge this year is coming from um, Washington. She is coming out of state from Washington. And um, she is. Um, she will judge our open class rabbits, our 4-H rabbits, and our showmanship rabbits. Okay, and she's a... She experienced is, judge. She is an experienced judge. She is what, uh, a, a judge for American Rabbit Breeders with the Association of America. And um, rap, American Rabbit Breeders is a worldwide club that um, you show rabbits in. It's sort of like okay. the KC with dogs. Now, is this so. a potential entry? He is, yep. This is uh, one of my daughter's 4-H rabbits, uh, and open class rabbits. And um, he is an American Fuzzy Lock. 
He is a tri-color American Fuzzy Wop, so he has three different colors on him. So he is uh, black and fawn and white. I and see. he is a wool rabbit. And um, we're spinning his wool over here. And um, so we take the we take the wool from the What do you the do? What do you do? Comb him out. We, you comb it out, and you'll thin it out, and you'll take out any of the any mats. And as you thin the wool out, then you'll pass the wool, and then she'll take the wool and make it into yarn, make it into a, a usable product to make an end roll sweater or something like that. And so, um, so then there's um, seven different wool varieties, and some of the wool is softer, some of it's coarser, some of it's more satiny, but um, there are, I believe it's seven different varieties of breeds of wool rabbits. So, and do they compete on, on the type of wool? They uh, compete, yep, each breed competes individually. And um, they all have to fit into a standard of perfection for their breed. So um, the different wool varieties, the giant angora, the jersey woolly, the American fuzzy law, the satin angora, and they all have different they all have different criteria for what makes them the perfect American fuzzy lop or satin okay. angora. Um, some of the wool is longer. Some they have shorter. a perfection, and they and they're judged against that perfect. that perfection. Exactly. Right. Yep. And they're given so many points for various things. For various things, for the head, the ears, the wool. Well, I must say this is a very gentle rabbit. He is a wonderful, sweet rabbit. They yeah, they tend to be a they tend to be a good pet. They're they tend to be very mellow. All the ones that we've had have been very mellow and. So w when are the entry dates for the uh, rabbit barn? Well, the 4-H entry date's already passed. Um, the open class entry date is in, in July, at the end of July, and you can enter online. Um, and you can also, if you don't have access to a computer, you can come into the fair office and use their computers and they'll talk you through. And this year with our Arvis show, we are doing an Arvis show Monday morning up fair, which is Monday, August 10th. And, um, that that it's an Arvis show, but it also play, pays premiums. So, and then the 4-H okay. show will be in the afternoon, and 4-H showmanship will be on Tuesday morning. Okay. At Nine o'clock. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to share with you us? Bet. We brought some uh, meat rabbits over here. We have some California meat rabbits. And um, yeah, we can swap them out over here. We can certainly swap them out. Might not be great. And uh, these rabbits are judged on a few different criteria. They are a meat rabbit. So they're a commercial breed of rabbit. They are raised for fur, meat, show, and pet. Um, these rabbits are junior does. They are about 10 weeks old. And they're already at three pounds, ready for harvesting, if you will, or fryer, if you will. Um, the, the processing weight is between three and five pounds. Three pounds being a fryer, five pounds being a roaster. And um, on, on a rabbit, your, your main meat is your back strap and your hindquarters is where the main meat product is. And um, Californians are a wonderful, gentle breed as well. Um, they have a great meat to bone ratio and a great growth. They grow very quickly. Okay. So by the time they're 10 to 12 weeks old, they're ready. So They're ready. They're ready. Yep. Is there quite a market for rabbits? There actually is quite a market for rabbits. There is. Unfortunately, we don't have a processing plant here in Montana anymore. So it's, it's basically all private sales. But, private sales. Um, but yeah, there is quite a good market here in Montana okay. for it. So hopefully we'll get a meat processing back sometime. Yeah. Well, tell us about the wool over here. Okay. Because this is kind of interesting. All right, let's talk about wool. Go ahead. It's all you. All me, what's all you, wool. <laughs> so you've got a, a, a wool a spinner? A spinner, yeah. Okay. and and. And basically what you do is you lead it in, is that what you're doing? Yeah, kind of make a string? Yeah, and I'm just learning, so there's people that make it look a lot easier than me. <laughs> so, but you just um, put your wheel going, and then you just kind of lead it in, right? And as you're leading it in, we want to kind of thin it. Mine tends to be pretty big because I am learning. Right. So, you would use this wool for more things like hats rather than a... Yeah, you can um, use it for a variety of crochet. You can get... I um, just learned how to weave. So you can take this and actually put it into ply. So you can have two ply or three ply. And then just 
crochet. Now, do you have a category in the rabbit barn uh, for, for this? For, for the have the judging for the wool. Okay. Um, once you make it into something, it would probably go into to a the, different department. Yeah. But, but what you're doing is showing what you can do with the wool. With the, do with, with the yes. Okay. Yeah. So, and it's actually really fun and relaxing. Yes, I would think so. I, you could probably watch TV do that. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Or listen to music. Okay. <laughs> Get the beat of your foot. Yeah. Okay. Thank so, you. Yeah, thank and you. your name was? Jenny. Jenny? Yeah. Jenny at the... Jenny? Jenny at the rabbit barn. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So what barn is this? This is the 4-H Dog Project. Dog Project. Yes. Okay. And and these are before the fair, so no one sees us unless you're in the dog project. I see. And, you, and you're in charge? I'm in charge. And I'm you, Julia. Uh, Julia. And what is your name, Julia? My, uh, yeah. What is your name, Julia? Uh, I, I the know The 4-H Dog Superintendent. Okay. okay. And uh, how many breeds? Uh, uh, there, there's quite a few breeds. There's a lot of mixed breeds. A lot of mixed. They're not over pound puppies or they're just family pets. Um, some have. So they don't have to be a purebred to uh, to show up at your uh, dog show. We take anything and everything. All so, the way to toy poodles to St. Bernard's. And, and this is um, because it's a 4-H project. Mm -hmm. So you belong to a 4-H club? Um, I'm at the county level. On the county Everyone, level. Every 4-H club might have a dog project leader. And if they don't, they can do it at the county level. Okay. So we take them and we do meetings twice a month at the fort. And anyone can come and bring their dogs. It's the cheapest dog training ever. Oh, okay. Seven bucks. Get you Seven dollars. And, and you get to get your dog trained. Yep. Oh Does it cost anything to enter? Nope. Uh, for the fair? For the fair, yeah. No. Okay. And, and when do you have to have your entries in by? By June 10th. June 10th. So because our show is in the end of July. End of July. Before the fair, because a lot of the kids have crossover animals, whether they do sheep, pigs, goats, and the dog project takes a whole day because they have obedience and showmanship. Oh, I see. It's not an hour thing. It's an hour. Thing. So the, the importance is how the dog is treated and, and how well it's trained rather than its bloodlines. Oh, totally. Yep. Yeah. Oh, well, that's, it's that's all a, about taking care of the family pet. Whether yes. it's a mutt, whether it's a purebred, doesn't make any difference. Well, okay, well, I've, anything else you'd like to show me here? Um, we have, we show the kids how to work with the different powers, the harnesses, the show leads, the obedience leads. We show them grooming, because that's very important to keep your dog clean and healthy. Um, we give them handouts. Um, we do things for heat exhaustion, which is coming in handy this time of year. Uh, what to feed your pet, what not to feed your pet. Um, because people, they think that they can just eat people food all the time and they're okay. No. But it doesn't work that way. No, they need a balanced diet. They do, and they need a lot. They need a lot of things that we don't have in people food. So, right. Yeah. Okay. We want them to get them begging because it's not good. Okay. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hello. Oh, hello. And what barn is this? This is for the llamas and alpacas. Yeah, llamas and alpacas. And your name is? Don Moore. Don Moore. Mm -hmm. and, and tell us what you've got showing here. Well, because of the heat, I didn't want to bring animals in here. But we thought, I thought I'd bring some publications and some products. OK. And what are they? This is uh, well, combings? This, or? These are what are called rovings, uh, made from some of my fi llama fiber. And um, you can use the rovings for spinning into yarn, or you can use the rovings on their own for different projects. Um, I've been crocheting with them, and then I crochet a hat form, and then I throw it into the washing machine with hot water and soap to create hats. Oh, I see. Well, that's interesting. So that's practical. It's practical. It makes good use out of the fiber that I have. And then I brought in some raw fleeces so people can see different types of fleeces. This is a fleece called a Surrey fleece. You can see that it has all these little locks. Different colors, yeah. Well, and you can see the little pencil locks and stuff in oh, it. Oh, yeah. That's, this produces a type of yarn that's good for laces and anything that requires drape. These are loftier fibers. You can see how puffy everything looks and stuff. These are wonderful for producing sweaters and socks, anything that needs to trap air for warmth. 
Okay. So I brought that. I brought a day pack so people could see the types of day packs that we use on our animals. And and when is your entry for the uh, lavas? Um, it is the same as everybody else's. I believe it's the first week of July, but everybody's entry is July 10th. In. Yeah, open yes. entry. For the livestock exhibits, yes. And uh, can they do it online and then yes, pa and paper? Yes, they can do it online and paper it online. Um, we have classes for uh, halter confirmation. We have courses uh, in performance, so we have entries for performance. And then we also have um, fiber entries. So we would encourage anybody that has either llamas or a pack that would be interested to please get online to the Western Montana Fair website what? and, and sign up. We'd love and, to see them. And I assume you're a fountain of information on uh, uh, about llamas, huh? I certainly am. I've been in, in llamas for almost 20 years now. Oh. And I show on a national basis. Oh, so you kind of are experienced. A little experienced. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us? Um, just that llamas and alpacas are amazing animals. They're versatile. You can use them for so many different things that people don't even realize. Not only do you have their fiber, not only can you pack with them. We know people that have their llamas Delta Companion certified and they take them into um, hospice situations, hospitals, rest homes. Um, they take them into camps for troubled children and use them for therapy in there. Uh, you can train llamas to pull a um, two-person cart, and you can go karting, and you can go off-road karting, which I have friends that do that on a regular basis. Oh. Uh, and plus, they're just amazing companions. Okay, and how are the ju llamas judged at the fair? Are they against a standard? or? Um, yes, um, you can see actually we use the ALSA standard. We have a show association. There are two actual national show associations for llamas. We use the ALSA standards for which for this show. Um, so we use those standards for both our confirmation and our performance classes. And do you have a professional judge come in? Um, we usually don't because of the costs involved. Um, you know, the, but, but, you have a, but you have uh, experienced judges, we though. We do have experienced judges. Most of the time, they're either they're retired or apprentice judges that we have. Oh, okay. Okay, is there anything else you'd like to share? I think that's pretty much is it. Well, I want to thank you. And thank you. And I hope you have some entries on July 10th. I hope we do, too. Yes. Is this where we give out samples? Oh, hello there. Hello. Hello. So this is culinary, I take it. This is culinary. This is culinary. And your names are? I'm Helen Moore. Helen Moore. Mm -hmm. And you're the superintendent? Yes, I am. And is a Carolyn helper? Yes, a helper. Helper, yes. Helper, yes. <laughs> you're, you're always a lot of help, uh, Carolyn. <laughs> and uh, tell us about what this says. There was a mistake in the fair book, and it should read that we are taking perishables on Sunday and Monday instead of Monday and Tuesday, because Tuesday is our judging day. Oh. So like your cakes, pies, any of your perishables should be brought in on Sunday and Monday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So that is what this is about. Non-perishables are Thursday, the uh, 7th of August, and Friday, the 8th of August from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. that would be your canning? Yeah. Canning. Like canning, I think? Uh, all your beverages, that type of things. Okay, well, tell us what, uh, these are various categories, I think it. Mm -hmm. We have pies and cakes, yeah. and cookies, cookies, cinnamon rolls, yeast breads, uh, rolls. These are two different size pans. If they don't want to make a 9 by 13 cake, they can make either one of these and it doesn't matter to us. That they way can, they can see half of it for their family. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And you can buy the little foil pans that have the lids and you don't have to try to cram it in a plastic bag or put Right. And ruin the texture of the right. top. Right. Yeah, uh, we want to also stress that when they enter in the baked items, when it's items like this, that what you bring in should 
pretty much be the same size and the same color. You know, not one of them real dark and the other two real light. Or something. And always, don't bring us four. In other words, don't bribe the judge. Okay. It says, it says three, three, bring three. It says right. three in the book, bring three. Yes. Okay, good. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to tell us about? Um, refrigerated items are back in the book. Okay. Men's only. And men's only is back in the book. Okay. We also have a new division this year called Gluten Free. Okay. Uh, we put several entries uh, that were taken out of the book before back in the book. We put new things in the kids division. We have 17 divisions now. Oh, that's good. Well, let's hopefully you'll get um, some entries and, and people enjoy it. It's always been a very popular um, thing in the fair. Are you doing all those crazy contests still? Yes. We're doing the contests yes. and the demonstrations. We we'll have demonstrations throughout the day from different people. And um, our first competition is International Day, which is anything uh, international. That's on Wednesday at 3 p.m. Then on Thursday is a brand new competition this year. It's any type of sandwich. Okay. And then Friday is honoring the cancer cause. It's men only cook-off. Okay. And then Saturday, of course, is our chili cook-off, which is a, is a big thing. And then on Sunday is chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. Okay. Well, that's always my favorite. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, and we also wanted to stress that in the past, people have been bringing in, it, it said in the book, and they've been bringing in a half, a half a cake, a half a pie, but that so often destroys the look and takes away from uh, their chances in, uh, in getting their ribbon, you know, their pie might leak together and right. get rust and that sort of thing. So if they want to bring in a whole item, they certainly can. Okay. And that is okay. And it's all listed in the in the uh, premium book tells you exactly about what the entry should look like. Yes. Yes. And we also wanted to stress in the canning uh, that uh, like for instance if you're if you're doing beans or peas or corn or something like that, go ahead and can for your family as you always would, but make one special jar for the fair where Everything is uniform and packed perfectly, and uh, just just as nice as you can possibly make it. And then our, our ball lid and our ball jar. Yes. Because this year we have special awards from Ball and Kerr Company, where they can win a, a certificate from them. But it has to be ball jar, ball, ball lid. lid, Kerr jar, Kerr lid. Okay. Yeah. Also, in the jams and jellies, which are opened and tasted, we want to tell you to make certain that your rings and your lids are new. They're not old, they're not rusty. This happens so often. So, make certain that those are new. Um, and also, there's only one way for canning the jams and the jellies. Either water bath or pressure cooker. No inversion, which means tipping the hot jar upside down and sealing it, that's not acceptable. Nor putting it under the broiler in the oven, that is not acceptable. I don't think that the judges would know, because we can find the burn spot. If it's been under the broiler, the inside of the lid will be burned. Or there will be jam all over the inside of the lid if it's inverted. And so always water bath or pressure cooker. Okay. Nothing else is acceptable. Okay. And then, Anything else you'd like to tell us? Enter. Enter. Enter culinary. Enter, yes. Um, and bring the children, make sure the children enter. We uh, would love to see the children's categories build back up again the way they were. Okay. We, we want to see these children trying their hand out okay. at uh, culinary. So yes, okay. enter, enter, enter. Thank you. And men's only. Men's only. <laughs> yeah. If I have time, yeah. <laughs> okay, what department do we have here? Home Arts? Home Arts. And who's the superintendent? Bonnie. How do you say Bonnie's last name? Well, she's not here, right? Bonnie. 
Vanderlands or something. Well, but I was a superintendent for 11 years. Yeah. Okay, and, and, and your name is? Julie Meininger. Okay, Julie, Julie, tell us what's going on here. Oh, and your name? Oh, I'm Sarah Beatty. Hi, Sarah. And she's been here forever, too. Yeah. Okay, you're we, helping. We, I've been here for 25 years. I've been in different buildings. And me, yeah. too. Yeah. Well, uh, tell, <laughs> tell us what's going on here. Um, so this is crocheting, and this is hand quilting. This is crocheting. And crocheting, and then this is uh, hand stitch too. And then there's some material. Uh, I'm just showing a variety of things with the books of of what can be brought in. Okay, and and the books have various categories that you can enter. Yes. And in those categories, it explains exactly uh, what you, uh, what you need to do to comply with those rules. Yes, in the very uh, beginning of the um, home arts. This section right here, it tells you. Those are the rules? Yes. Okay. And then when you go in here, you'll have um, all the divisions. Yeah, all the divisions in crochet, all the different types. You can do a hat, or dolls, or baby when, clothes. And when are your entry times? Um, did you want to look at that? Our entry deadline is February, July 31st on the computer, right? Yeah, that's then, the last day they can enter on the computer. In February. Yes. January. 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 Or July. I'm sorry. Sorry. July. July 31st. Well, I was thinking that would be yeah. awfully early. Yeah. July 31st. And then the you stuff. can bring your exhibits in after you enter them uh, August 6th and August 7th. Okay. So you can bring them into the building and that's when we take the entries in. And then if they don't do it on the computer, they can take them to the office, right? And the office, and the office will help. Will. So if you don't have a computer, you can go to the office and they will help you get it onto the computer. Right. Okay. Or the library. So July 27th, did you say? July 31st. July 31st. Yes. And after that, you can still enter? You can still enter, but um, you can You have to go to the office. You have to go to the office, yes. And if you enter after that time, you can get a ribbon, but you can't get any monetary cash yeah. Yeah, money. Okay. So after that time, uh, you can win a ribbon, but you you don't get a premium for it. Right. You do not. Thank you. Well, you get the uh, the pride of, of winning, though. Right. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. And is there and anything else you'd like to tell us about? Um, well, one thing that we're doing this year that's new, and the one thing that's kind of special about this um, building is everything has, most people bring in stuff and always has, like, a story behind it. So, like, a person builds or makes a quilt, and they have... You know, they made it for their grandchild, or they made it for, you know, a graduate, and they made it out of different things, like t-shirts or whatever, so everything has a storyline. So this year we're doing, an, um, whoever brings, we're doing a category that has the best storyline, so you bring, you can bring in your quilt or scarf or whatever, and write a, like a six, I think it's 60 words. 60 less. words or less about the story, about this quilt or whatever it is. And, oh, and um, that'll tell us and, what's special. Yeah, and then you get a prize for that, um, whoever wins the best story. So that's one thing that's new this year. But that's the cool thing about this building is everything has a story. And then throughout the fair, we're always telling the people stories about like Take their pillows or whatever. Tours. Yeah. And tell them the story <laughs> the about each item. Yeah, so that is my favorite part. Yeah. I've always just loved that. Yeah, my favorite part is when they bring things in and tells us about what, you and know, you can why see they made the them. twinkle in their eyes about how excited they are. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, so that's pretty fun. exciting. Yeah, so. that's fun. Yeah. It's a pretty fun building and it's really fun looking at all the quilts and and uh, crocheted items, crocheted items and, and craft stitch. And people make soap and lotions and weaving. And, and those are all the categories? Yes. Yeah, some of them so. that we've mentioned. And then in the past, people have won. Um, we have lots of different sewing um, companies or like different um, businesses? businesses in town that donates to oh, the yeah. Walmarts. And they give like, one year a little girl won a... Um, sewing machine, and which was pretty exciting for yeah. us. I think she was like 10 and she wanted a sewing machine, so that was pretty exciting. And yeah. so, yeah, we get some pretty great prizes for some of our, our people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to share? No, nope, I think okay. that was it. We yeah, covered everything? Yeah. Okay, well, 
I hope we have lots of entries. Oh, I oh, hope yeah. so too. <laughs> we need it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, what is your name? My name is Linda Sadler. I'm the Montana Federation of Garden Clubs president, uh, assistant to the building superintendent, member of the Missoula Garden Club, which is sponsoring the show called Road Trip at the Fair. And uh, when does the uh, fair entries have to be done? The fair entries start again, begin on Monday, uh, July, uh, August 10th at 1 o'clock, 1 till 8, and again on Tuesday morning from early, early, from early morning and end at 10 o'clock on Tuesday morning. Judging begins and then the building opens permanently at 5 p.m. on Tuesday, July 11th, August 11th. Okay. And uh, so you don't have to pre-register, you just show no, up? No, you just come with your flowers. We have people here that will help you. We will help you identify your flowers if you don't know what they are. We have people, and then we have people that will place your flowers. You bring them to a particular place and then they are placed to be judged. And there's uh, um, there's horticulture entries and, and, and design. There, there's, there's, there's two sections, horticulture, which is the flowers, and then there's design where you take and see all these beautiful things that people put together to design, to design with. And there's big cash awards. Yeah, yeah, oh yes, there are cash awards. The Prime Foundation has um, has provided uh, cash awards for uh, the best horticulture, the best design. design, the best child's design, or child's horticulture. We, um, we have sections in here for children, all kinds of things that children can do. They just have to make sure they put on their age so that they know what age they are. They can enter flowers and they can enter a craft type things such as the Broadway, such as the monster category, or we call the Broadway monster. Uh, See, so the Prime Foundation has given $500 for yes, all like the pri yes. for the prizes, and a um, horticulture entry uh, for a blue is uh, $3, two for a, uh, for, a for a for a red, and one for a third. And in the design section, it's five and three. Five and three. Five for a blue and three for a red. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us about the, uh, about the All show? All kinds of interesting things that you will see. We have, take, uh, we have, besides the flowers, which are absolutely gorgeous to look and to see the flowers, in the design section, we have, these, we have designs. Um, we have petite designs, which are little tiny things. Um, five and eight inches, or eight and 12, five, eight and 12 inches. We have table artistry designs, uh, which are very interesting for people to love to look at those. Craft work. And we have craft. We have craft things. There's a section called the craft fair where we have craft things. Um, you can enter cards and wreaths uh, and uh, and. Um, Packages that you have decorated using uh, dried flowers. Uh, everything in our division that you do must, in some way, have either a real flower or a dried flower. Okay. Okay, and I think that's about it, right? Yeah. Yes. He is the superintendent. Yeah. And we want to welcome everybody uh, and hope they all show up at the uh, at the Western uh, Montana Fair. We're looking forward to. Uh, to the entries and, and the participation of our community. Please help us save our fare.